Hey there, gamers. I hope you enjoy this podcast video that I have for you today. It's the longest one yet with 11 people, and it's the biggest one. We dive into the logos for the three playable factions, including weapons in the play, uh, in the play test, and what everybody wants to see and don't want to see in GZW. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's get into it. What is up, guys? This is Tactical Gamer here, your host. We have quite a few people here with a possible join in later by Luna Moth. We have Destroyer, Kusho Shinzo, The Fat Hands, The Contractor, Operator Sin, Court, Mason, S, and Zap. Three of them are muted for now. Uh, I guess they're going to give some info, insight, whatnot later. But uh, we're just going to hop straight into this and we're going to take it away with Clan Emblems. So, first off. We're going to go ahead and play this video real quick. And then we're going to take it away. All right, so what do you guys think about the first LRI? What is this, a panther? Tiger? What are y'all thinking? Does it look good? How do y'all feel about uh, that? I'll, the one I'm not going to lie. The first thing pops in the head is Black Panther. I don't know, I don't know why. <laughs> Black Panther. For sure, for sure. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. It's not too bad. The one thing I, I notice is the font is, it's almost like a, the Chop Suey font, but instead of for like uh, East Asian, it's uh, for like Thai, Lao uh, sort of uh, script. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm not, I'm not the uh, biggest fan of that. I mean, it's um, supposed to be taking place in Lao, be a resemblance of that, right? Laos. Yeah, Laos, yeah, Laos. So that's uh, two different things, I'm guessing? Lao and Laos? No, they're the same. Guys, oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Just a, uh, like a nickname OS. portion? Okay. Um, just making sure. But yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the font choice. Just, it just uh, feels like a, like a chop suey, you know? Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to uh, read for me, honestly. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Like <laughs> it, I, I think it fits quite well, uh, especially because if you read, I mean, if you take the language they're currently using within the game that is uh, native to the area, they just made it the same font but with English characters. I, I think that's the issue with it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah, that's what I, what I mean when I say chops like chops be funds. Yeah, it's not bad. Saying. No, no it's, mean, not, it's, it's not horrible, but it's, you know, th there's definitely different script choices that they could have picked. Yeah, I yeah, don't think it's horrible. Yeah. Anyone wants to and put any other insight? I think it's good for their first official thing. I would probably recommend something where I would like to see them use, like, maybe a different language for some of the emblems, especially for that one, maybe. I have two different versions of that one. One uh, that's more clean and modern. And, uh... Ones that's uh, in uh, whatever language Lemang will be using. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, LRI is the Lemang Relief Agency. So they're like, uh, I guess their backstory for the faction is basically it's people who live there. I mean, in question. I don't I mean, know. Based on what the faction lore we have, I felt like it was more uh, people who came in like uh, non-profits. Yeah, uh, helping local like local groups. Yeah, but I got yeah, it, saying. it was a businessman who came in under the guise of helping the people, uh, but for his own gain, kind of. Yeah. So does that well, mean it's like a local train militia? I believe that would be. I think they uh, might perhaps. have. Some it might people, be the ballpark. But... I'm I'm really interested in just the the symbol of choice right because i'm trying to figure out what that resembles right because obviously you got just the the outline you got a square and a diamond what, yeah what, like, and like some is... teardrop type deals going on yeah, so teardrop, know, it, it gives off that like that peacekeeping vibe in a way because i don't right. know it gives off that southern asian kind of vibe to it though so i think it does fit yeah what, what do y'all think, like a panther, you know? Uh, yeah, that's something I was going to say, is it kind of, with the teardrops and the panther, it kind of seems like maybe they're... I would say, I, I would say leopard. 
Leopard? Yeah, oh, for I mean, the area. Yeah, that are, makes probably more are, sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the nose and, uh, is too extinct. Like, uh, like, well, the... it's definitely. I'm more hat. thinking about what would be common in that area and in south, like uh, in the uh, south, southeast Asia and all that. Well, pa pan stuff. panthers are jungle animals. They That's are, a bat. but they also uh, have Indo. Mostly, they have Indo-Chinese leopards and also uh tigers but i don't think yeah, it's true tiger. you don't think it kind of looks like a bat in a weird way no 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 <laughs> like a bat's head everyone who's gonna watch this video uh, is now gonna look at this trying I... to figure out how you're seeing how a bat you see a <laughs> yeah, yeah, are, you are, you are you good <laughs> or are we back to the far fetch side of things we're going back to the first podcast yeah. wait but then again it based off of that symbol in the, the center it looks like it's it looks like it's ready to a, attack and that's what like, i was oh, gonna say oh yeah it's like it's like I, mid I don't don't see, yeah he's this, keeping this isn't giving me a relief agency vibe with the whole panther. Uh, it's it's like, like you gotta think of the teardrops associated with death and violence and things like that. It's one hundred percent American culture. It could be think blood of the drops too. Too one hundred percent. And the well, the panther, whatever the animal is, it's some kind of hunter, some kind of attacker, maybe a stalker in some sort. So it doesn't remind me about peacekeeping or relief force. That's you, you usually don't see that. You see a lot of globes on relief forces. That's what they love to put on there's their globes to kind of show that they unify, but. I feel like it has something to do with pride. Could be. Kind of weird, but you, you play. Uh, you guys ever play Far uh, Far Cry Three? I mean, Four. Yes. For some reason, the whole sim, like the whole thing as a whole, kind of reminds me of like the elephant tiger. Kind of reminds me of the the tiger aspect. Ooh. Um. Just a an in a little bit of insight here. So like uh, where I'm from. Uh, the pelican is like our main bird and like how the eagle is the state bird maybe the panther or whatever this is is lemong's animal of like the area how they whatever they chose you get what i'm saying maybe that's why that's on here i'm just speculating not sure how we could research that but one thing um, i would like to point out though real quick is that it looks like uh, the panther, or whatever animal you want to call it, uh, is surrounded by a sun, and the teardrops are the rays. Uh, sun might be kind of associated with relief as well. I've seen that before. Um, and, and you also see a bat? Hmm? <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> no, it's a, a bat surrounded by bat. sun and rays? I mean, he can't see. So, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, no, I could, I could kind of see a sun, and then the rays, like what you're talking about here. Wait, what, what if it's not a panther per se? What if it's, uh, what's it called? What if it's an Asian golden cat, something like a lynx? Ooh. Well, I was not really sure lynx the leopard, because there's a lot of Indo-Chinese leopards in, in that sort of region. Yeah, because they also yeah. have a golden cat, which is... It's kind of its own variation of that. It's a really big cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, any more insight for it? Before we move on? No, other than just curiosity of what symbolism the, rain, the teardrops would actually mean for that area of the world. Yeah. I mean, I, I think at this point, it's pretty much just something they chose or whatever not too too much symbolism uh I'd, I'd say the only symbolism is really this here i don't know i'd love to hear honestly more backstory on how they came to choose these you know i'd love to hear that whoever de designed them but uh i guess yeah, we're moving definitely. on yep. let's see what we got up here i believe it is now matthias Mithras. M Matthias. <laughs> Matthias. <laughs> Matthias. No wonder Jackson's going to Mithras. <laughs> oh, damn. Look, so, I'm a little blind, okay. Mithras is basically straight fucking forward. You got a circle, two mountain peaks. <laughs> it's an M, obviously. And uh, Mithras security systems. But I'm kind of curious why they went with 
security systems up here instead of like you know of what it entails uh since i also do a little bit of self-publishing my eyes are drawn to down here first which is good and then up here so i, I feel they did pretty damn good on the optimization of this logo but um what's the speculation around the stars you feel these are from from what i take it this is going to be your more I wouldn't say like necessarily like NATO line, but these are like your yeah. more clear cut. These guys are probably coming from, yeah, like I, obviously military for hire. That that whole spiel with it. It's these are so your guys. Man. Yeah. From so, read, oh, my sorry, Bishop. No, go ahead, man. From what I've read, Mythos kind of reminds me a lot of what um, Blackwater originated with. They were hiring I was about to say the same thing. former, yeah. They, they they hire former military and they focus on that. And they they split it in kind of like a, a Roman type, uh, like ladder where things are split up not so evenly, but more like experience and command and who's higher in the chain of command gets more of the loot per se. I'm gonna put that in quotations, but that's how it works. Is they work on a, a very linear and military like structure, which is the reason I personally chose them because it reminds me of stuff that I wanted to do before everything else happened but i wanted to point to the m because that's what draws me and i know you mentioned that you're drawn to the m uh, the mithras part of it but i'm seeing an image in there in that m. i don't know what it is i don't know exactly what i'm seeing but i, I do see an image in there like it's trying to compel and tell something it's and i just can't put my i can't put my finger on it but we haven't really seen what the mountain looks like yeah that's all i'm saying i'm not i'm not taking it past that but no i get what you're saying that. yeah you know what i mean like hold up i i got something right so you see all the t the top portion of like that obviously on the outside you got the mountain right yeah within it it looks so within it it looks like you got the mountains close together and then maybe a hidden underground like it because it's going downwards into like a funnel yeah yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's weird that's that pretty they good. the bottom lines like that into a funnel, it, or even the bottom lines at all. If you just wanted an end, you just get rid of those bottom sections and the I call them brackets. But it seems yeah. like they're compelling an image of like an underground society or some sort like that. Yeah, I feel like, like now you're shit. Guys. You're sending shivers down the spine, bro. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I, these guys. I think it's gonna be awesome. Go for it, Court. Sorry. Uh, Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, um, I was saying these guys, right? I feel like Mithras, I feel like these are going to be the guys that really came from, like, these are the guys that got hired because they like, hey, we need to figure out what's going on. Like, like what really went down on this island? Yeah, 100%. I feel yeah. it's mainly just a logo of, cho a logo of choice, but... Remember, guys, it's just speculation. This, uh, these guys are coming up with some pretty damn good shit. I would have never thought about the whole funnel thing. It's, uh, I would have just thought, you know, it looked like some fucking big ass hills here, you know? But uh, in, in, <laughs> you in, in you the obvious what, shape of an M. <laughs> you wanna know what my crazy ass thought first? Hey, if you say a fucking bat, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I hear a dinosaur, one no, time I'm leaving this. I, the first thing that popped into my mind was like the, or so, like it's a stretch. But like the snout of like a like a pig or a warthog. Okay. You know how you know how pigs, you know how yeah. pigs can smell pigs can smell okay. out uh yes. like uh, we're used to get like truffles. That's how you got truffles. They they they, they sniff them out. Okay. And so these guys are sniffing just whatever uh -huh. it is out in where we're at. That's that that I mean that's where my crazy my crazy head went. No 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 you, you got an open now, mind. I see, I see that. No 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 I, I see. <laughs> Jesus. Back to X-Men. So one thing I was... <laughs> uh, I was just joking. But uh, one thing I was going to pull up, because we have touched on this on uh, the last... Um, the last podcast I was in with you. Um, the logos all together, and I guess I could have brought this up after we looked at the, uh, the CSI logo, but they all give me off a Cold War vibe which we have talked quite a bit about uh, involving GZW. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They they all seem to be of an older era. 
That, uh, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Uh, it's not as clean as uh, most modern stuff you kind of see now with logos. Lamongs. So, like, I would say, yeah, it definitely reminds me. Lamongs turbulent past. Remember how they said that in the lore? That they had a turbulent past? So, I mean... I'd, I, yeah, I could see... I'd like I could more see lore. the Lamong one. Definitely. Uh, I could see the Lamong one being the new one of the two. But when it comes to Mithras and security... Or the uh, 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 Crimson Security Systems... Or... Mm, Security, security initiative. International. Is it Inter international? It's international, my bad. I, uh... Between uh, Mithras and uh, the Crimsons, um, they they definitely seem like they're a group that was established a while back ago, and I could see Lamong being a newer one, especially with their design, but also following an old style, which would make sense depending on how long Lamong has been uh, in in this turbulent state. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. Any other insight, guys? There was one thing I wanted to talk about, but I don't know how far of a tangent this will go off to. Have Feel you free. talked about the name of Mithras? No, actually. Uh, Mithras is... A religious name. It is a religious name that comes from both... Uh, sorry. It comes from uh, Mithric uh, mysteries. It is originally from <clears throat> Iran and was brought into the Roman Empire. And yep. it's the Mithraism. study of yeah, Mithraism. I'm getting that right now from um, the fellas at ChatGPT refers to a deity in ancient, ancient Persian and Roman mythology. So yeah, um, I do remember yeah. the word Mithras somewhere in like a, look, it had to have been a movie. A while back or something uh but yeah this this isn't the first time i've heard of the word mithras but a uh, great bring up dude that's that was a great catch there i don't know why uh nobody else thought about that i was waiting could, there reason, there are, there reason why there are wind peaks uh around areas where mithraism uh was in a lot of northern italy as well as in persia and there are two main twin peaks in both of those locations. Okay. Uh, the one I'm, it's not technically in Italy anymore. It's between Switzerland and Italy. It's uh, Breathhornsweisen. Uh, it's why, it's, I cannot speak this language. I'm going to put it in the chat. Breathhornsweisen? Uh, All right, let me see if I can read it. Because I can't. So you're saying that me, the, the, uh, the Mithras or Mithras, however we say it, uh, might have a European descent to it or a background. Perhaps that's, that's that's what I'm thinking. Either that, or they are fully um, Roman legion larpers. They Ooh. already structure their their looting and command structure pretty similar to Rome. Yes, it's so stated they... that. Yeah, I I was gonna bring that up, but I figured you were gonna take your tangent that way anyway. But I didn't even think about that because I, I I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little clueless about the the term Mithras. I didn't know anything about it until I googled it while you guys were going on your little conversation, but. Yeah, it, it makes sense that maybe they are European, maybe they're from North Italy, and that's where they get the Roman inspiration from for their command structure and both their logo and name. Obviously, the the, the Twin Peaks could just be M looked cool like that. So, uh, real quick, <laughs> I'm hoping that, there's more to it, though. That Me word too. that you just stated, Brit Horn Swilzen, basically. Yes, uh, the, so, the Bright Horn Twins. Brit means broad or wide. Horn means horn. Swinzen, or however you say it, uh, I, th I think I'm doing a pretty damn good job there, Rick, uh, means twins. So yes. broad or wide horn twins, talking about the mountains. This is, I think Rick and all, and probably Foxic if he watches this video, he's probably going to be spinning his head like, how did they figure this shit out? <laughs> I, mean, I could be because... completely off, but I'm going to set, I'm going to just pull up the image off the peach. <clears throat> no, I, perfect. But, uh, you know. If they question yes. this, this is because this is what I built Iram to be. I'm going to overlay, <laughs> I'm going to overlay these peaks, by the way, um, in the chat. 
Uh, let uh, me we just. Can't access the chat. Just no, 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 no. Uh, I'm telling like uh, the viewers. Uh, I okay. in in the video. Sorry, in the video. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think you're right on point with that, dude. That's pretty crazy. Because it, it looks uh, just like two twin peaks. You know what I mean? Fun fact with that. So. Uh... Mithra or uh, Mithra or Mithraism um, is also known as uh, Mithraic Mysteries or the Cult yes. of Mithras. Okay. Mithraic <laughs> Mysteries is how I found it. That's uh, some very good backstories right there, guys. Digging this shit up. Anything else? Uh, elf? <laughs> yeah, fucking Mithras. Anything else? <laughs> Anything uh, <laughs> else like uh, Mithras wise? Well, the other thing is, it's very symmetrical. There are two stars, two peaks, and yeah, that that denotes order. Yeah, the twin uh, aspect definitely pulls to it. Yeah, is and there it definitely seems to be very orderly in um, logo design and also in history uh, of the Roman Legion. Even the name security systems, right? Because the yeah. first thing that comes into mind, security systems, you're thinking, you know, cameras, obviously something's watching. But just breaking that down into just the simple term system, right? A way of working, organi organizing, or doing something which follows a fixed plan or set of rules. And in this case, I feel like this is going to be probably of the three factions we have, I feel like this is going to be this is considered like one of the more organized ones like these guys are going to be followed I mean, obviously still PMC so they're gonna anybody can do their own set of things but because it's more structured I feel the consequences might be more severe had they did something that could be seen morally right or wrong but who's to say yeah no, I, I follow what you're saying. Well, there's a um, a main word for Mithras that a lot of people have been using in chat, and it's um, furries. <laughs> oh my god. Kusho didn't Real. laugh? Come on, Kusho. You gotta laugh at that <laughs> well, one. I, well, hey, we got, we got I'm a, sorry, we got I've already heard it before. <laughs> if you're gonna we bring gotta... up furries, I'm gonna turn this conversation to a dinosaurs, alright? <laughs> I, I anyway, have to bring the, something uh, else up. the Lamang dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> we we gotta I'm bring the ice a little more. I'm telling you, dude. In the middle of the map, it's an engine bunker, bro. They're building dinosaurs. <laughs> building dinosaurs? Building? Dude, watch yes, it dude, actually build. be dinosaurs, and we're just joking God, around this worst. shit? It's a stalker. No, but... But, but what, what, what I, the other thing I did notice is even the color scheme, black and white, is very simple and straightforward. And yeah. the uniformity and everything to it. So. It definitely is. Um, anyone else want to add it, anything? Oh, go on. No, nah, I was just going to say it's just very simple in, in the way it is. There's no distractions, no nothing. It's just black and white. And that it makes me wonder if they're going to be changing the other logos because I noticed that the other logos were also black and white. Yeah. I mean, That's something I was going to mention was the black color. It, it, I'd say they portrayed it very good. I'll just go for a simple uh, push on unity and opposing factions, not enemy ones, and that we could all be one, hinting the black and white simple setup. I mean, that's just. Yeah simple imagery for me right there for for me i feel like this game isn't meant to be you are against the other factions i think it's more oh yeah you need no, to get this job done they happen to be in the area yeah doing their own thing they're in your way by any means no you should go and go kill all the <laughs> operators in the area they're stealing your stuff go get them yeah it's like no we need that intel not them yeah two hours later I just don't want to kill PMC quest. Yeah. Please, for the anyway, love of God, no kill PMC CSI. quest. I'm going to say um, this is a cult. A cult? <laughs> it, it could be a cult. Who knows? Uh, it's not like an alien spell. But uh, I guess let's move on to the next one. I'll go ahead and scroll past. Crimson Shield. So, at first we have 
a shield, right? Crimson, I I didn't even dive in to what crimson means. Fucking what? probably should have did that. But uh, the only time I really dealt with crimson was I think in Fallout and Starfield. So Starfield, eh, crimson kind of meant bad for me. You know, it, it gave me a the negative force, if you will. I uh, if you will, I guess. But um, I digress. So. We have the Earth Globe type deal here, which means basically Crimson Shield is global, in my opinion. What are y'all thoughts on that? But also you have... It's a, a compass type deal going on. South, North, West, East. What's... I don't know if that means spe specifically anything, but it's there. You know, it's something to talk about. Uh, anybody wants to give me uh, anything else? Looks yeah, like a crosshair on the road. I mean, on the world. Yeah. So props. Well. Man. Go ahead. Sorry, I've just had some other things. Nah. That's, that's, that's first thing that popped in my head is that, it, you know, it looks really aggressive because it, it looks like it's a concealed crosshair, you know, on the, on the globe. So. Ooh. I see that. Yep. That's a good one. I, I didn't even also, fucking see that, dude. Also, I mean, though. it's it's a stretch, but <clears throat> the oval that you see in the center, um, kind of, if you if you stretch it out, is an eye watching the world because it, most crosshairs in the center you have like a quote unquote dot, and that's like an eye, but instead yeah. of a horizontal, it's vertical on the globe. So it's you know like crosshairs on the globe, but also eye on the globe. So kind of interesting. So if, if y'all can is. picture removing this line, the middle line, and this bottom line, you just are left with this oval and then the globe portion, really resembling an eye. So Crimson Shield has their eye on you. We are the ninjas in the dark, if you will. Well, I mean, whenever the dark <laughs> comes, because it's just going to be daylight for a few years, apparently, in Grey Zone Warfare. But uh, So something I want to mention, <laughs> well, the color Crimson. Alrighty. It's often a descriptor. It's a, a very, very vivid descriptor in literature when it comes to um, blood. Okay. It is a term a lot of writers love to use when they're talking about a heavy amount of blood, a heavy amount of um, just any, like, you, you look into sniper's books, you look into operators writing about their experiences, the Tom Clancy series, when they're talking over the real stuff they've done. Crimson is a term they use a lot when they're describing blood. Okay. Something I noticed there, too, with the crosshair, with the eye. I don't see Crimson as the good guys. I know y'all love Crimson, but I, I, I have my eyes on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I don't think Crimson is neither good or bad. I think the world just represents what we stand for and that's honestly uh <clears throat> they will take anyone go anywhere or do anything it's what i think it means personally well because uh... they have been described as uh saying they will take anyone as long as they're good so hear me out right um based off of the little tidbit of information we got from crimson shield international right we know from what little information we got that they arose during the earliest stages of the Syrian civil war. So, um, based off of that knowledge, um, who's to say they, they, they probably already had their hand in this island per se. And they, they obviously had time to establish themselves. So who's to say that maybe I feel like Crimson Shield is hiding something. Maybe there was something left behind. But if we're talking solely about just the, the symbol itself, the term Crimson, it can also, uh, as far as symbols go, I get passion, strength, and courage. Like, yeah. And those three, that's what you would, that's what you would normally see and individuals yeah so i've got two lines of thoughts um one is about the color but i want to talk about the logo itself for a second so this is obviously a shield across the shield is a fess 
uh, which comes from the it comes from the same root as the English vestment, which are worn by knights and priests. Okay. Uh, they would be worn across shields to denote rank or allegiance to a higher power, like priests. Um, along with that, I just uh, with that I believe that either Crimson thinks of themselves as holy. I don't believe that, but I believe that they think that since they are confident about their members, that they would denote all of them as knights. Okay. The other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, Crimson, as a color itself, is red, but under certain lights, it turns to a purplish color. Purple is a very royal color, again with going prestige. Um, but Crimson obviously comes from dead insects. Uh, so there's a lot of death and also royalty, I think, in this uh, in in the symbolism of this logo and, and uh, the naming convention around the name. I mean, it could be to the point of it. I wouldn't say like holy, but maybe they had the authoritative figure to take necessary action for the betterment of their goal or what they believe to be right within the world at all cost, which would Big line problem. up with their lore. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I really like the insight here. Um, so, Crimson Shield and basically having a foothold uh, here for a while and was established very early of what it seems, earlier than all the other ones. Um, and it's linked to royalty, like... I feel... I've just sent you the fest on okay. DMs. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying here. I'll go ahead and throw this uh, picture up also for the chat. Um, one thing I'd like to touch on is... Let me just put this down real quick. So... I think the lore is going to point to one specific faction having possibly caused the event in Le Mans. And I, I really actually do hope that's kind of where the lore goes, to put factions against each other later on, you know, in a certain way. Maybe they all had a foothold and all get fingers pointed at, the, at each other for some reason. Because there's... There's still one main thing that we do not know that just just has me. Um, the whole event where before we come into the picture, uh, it's previous inhabitants, um, I guess the original militia or whatever that was there. I can't remember the exact uh, words for the lore, but uh, they were wiped out by, by an unknown force. We still don't know what this force is, whether that's unhuman in nature or whatnot, what have you. But dinosaurs, um, who knows, you know? Um, I think it's going to point to one of the factions for sure. Uh, what are y'all thoughts on that? I think it would be interesting to see at the end of this, uh, there being a hidden fourth or fifth faction. Uh, not player, not, not being able to, not that us players can play as them, but kind of like a super secret Black Ops type stuff um, that is responsible uh, to some degree of whatever the event is, or maybe not whatever the event is, but it is somehow related to that. And there's a reason why, like, the UN pulled out, for example, because uh, these guys would do raids and stuff like that, and, you know, mass casualties, wiping out of the initial local militia that the UN helped establish, things like that. I think that would be interesting to see. Um, definitely would, at least I feel it would make sense, um, given that if the event is some sort of thing that's like off the books by like some super rich uh, wealthy company uh, run by a businessman or uh, 
other nations how running um, some sort of off the books research that would make sense that you would have an off the books black ops unit come and wipe everything out kind of uh, erase that that even existed yeah that makes sense uh, anyone else want to add anything here um, so I hate to be the one to ask this, but have y'all read the Lord of GZW? Like honestly, um, like the, the the official lore. Previously, Lord? I have. I would need to. Not recently. Yeah, I'd, yes. I'd have to brush up big time. It's been over a month. Okay, so uh, to sum this up, uh, Le Mans was a British colony that was uh, went to civil war and had, had finally broke free of it, and then they were backed by uh, the Soviets, uh, who supplied them with um, weapons and uh, just small small stuff uh, to help them with strength. Um, a guy named uh, Rex May, Rex May, R A K S M. E I. Um, I'm not saying his last name. Uh, actually, yeah, it's uh, Soyevang. Um, he died in 1996 with his only son, who was 28 year olds, uh, Nerith uh, Soyevang. Which, if you notice, uh, we we have the Nerith uh, Fort. Um, he became the new leader of the island, uh, and he was promising a lot of stuff, uh, and that he would end his uh, father's isol or. Er, Isolate. Isolationism. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> policies. I love being dyslexic and having a stutter. Uh, <laughs> it really makes life fun, man. Um, but he was promising to end that. And uh, in the next millennium, throughout modernization, uh, openness, uh, claiming to focus on tourism, he ordered the construction of his crowning jewel, the Midnight Sapphire, uh, a luxurious resort where legend has it uh, all was allowed for the right price. Um, during the next three decades, uh, those few who managed to escape the island told vastly different stories and pleaded with the rest of the world uh, for help until finally the UN decided to act and established the UNLRA, the United Nations Lamont Relief Agency, to provide at least a uh, modicum of assistance to uh, to the oppressed people. Uh, with Nerith, uh, with Nerith, Nerith's hesitant approval, UNR, or UNLRA arrived in Lamont uh, to assess uh, the situation and began uh, its humanitarian mission. A few months later, a distractor, a distractor, disaster struck with a blinding flash and a thunderous roar, and parts of the island uh, was forever transformed by sudden chaotic or er, cataclysmic, cataclysmic, cataclysmic events. And that's pretty much the brief history of Lamong that we have. Yeah. So the way I see it is the three factions line up with the next three decades, those few who managed to escape, who told vastly different stories and pleaded, uh, pleaded with the rest of the world. Well, you have, th you have them mentioning three decades. We have three factions that could be three different sides of the stories on what is on the Island on top of blinding flash with a thunderous roar. What does that sound like to you? It has to um, be an explosion. Like a nuke something because uh i know when the um they dropped the bombs and that concluded the uh pacific campaign for the united states by them dropping the nuke on Nagas nagasaki and hiroshima um there was one guy who managed to survive both and that's that description he got it was a blinding light at first, followed by that roar. Yeah. And th so I did skip a bit on the lore that I probably should read. Um, uh, so it's uh, uh, so when the uh, so when whenever they aligned with the Soviet unions, um, Ramsky's victory was made possible uh, thanks to the help of the Soviets who supplied the soul. Um, 
with weapons in exchange for strengthening their positions during the Vietnam War, building various military installations over Le Mans. A small contingent of Soviet troops remained on the island even after the end of the conflict uh, and finally left after the uh, uh, disillusion dis disillusion of this why is it disillusion i'm confused i, I should say it like, I, I don't know of the soviet union uh, in 1991 um yeah so building various military installment installations yeah which yeah. we've already talked about a bunker possibly being in the gray zone yeah I, i'm 100%. really starting to think that maybe it was a facility that was uh used for making bombs not yeah. to say nukes, but we have uh, we have already seen the uh, the radiation symbol and the uh, what's the other one? Uh, chemical. Yes, I believe it's chemical still. It could be a good fair portion of both, or even more than that too. I mean, I did mention a dirty bomb in the last video. Yeah, it really depends. Would uh, anybody else like to add to this portion on the lore? I guess that's a no. Um, so we are going to move on to possibly the most fun one yet. The starter weapons and clan emblems. Let me just skip on over to the next picture that is not working for some kind of reason. So... Okay, technical difficulties. I'm gonna have to note that. I guess one thing that I, I'm not sure if you guys even talked about, but one thing that I did notice is just Gray Zone Warfare's logo, it's in of itself. That, that triangle depicting, hey, there's three yeah now, i'm i'm kind of curious about it right because when you you see it it kind of also resembles that of i'm trying to three think. sides of the story three sides of the faction yep it, it it's all playing together yeah well, but then there's really something in the center what is that hollow thing. space in that in the center of that that logo say that would be the objective dinosaur egg <laughs> dinosaur the aliens the aliens could be it's gonna be aliens guys i'm telling you could be perhaps. i mean if it's a dinosaur egg it's gonna be perfect by the time i get to it arc two should be up i'm <laughs> also thinking right <laughs> Because if you think about it, right, this triangle is also connected. So what if, even though it's three different sides of the story, what would happen if you combined all three sides? Like you got something from everything pieced together in one, one big picture. I think that centers that big picture from all three sides. Uh, I do think all three factions are technically a part of the same... Uh... I, I, I think all three factions are the UNLRA, the United uh, United Nations Long Re Re Relief Agency, yeah, working but separately but all a part of it. Yeah, we're uh, we're in the middle of a video gamma, but feel free to do as you wish. We're about forty minutes in now. Uh, we're about to go over guns and whatnot. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay, I thought we were going over uh, emblems. No, 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 no. Yeah, emblems was first. And uh, now we're moving on to the next subject. Oh, Quite a I, few subjects. I thought you meant. I thought you meant like player customized emblems. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I mean, I, I could throw my stuff up here, but uh, I mean, it's not that good, you know. But uh, <laughs> no, I. Look, man, I don't. All I need are letters. <laughs> Just letters. Just letters. Um, Crimson Elite Spec Ops. Uh, that's that's my shit. <clears throat> that's your letters. Um, so we're gonna move on real quick, guys. Uh, we're spending a lot of time on just emblems, which is pretty crazy, but fucking wonderful for the community. Like Rick had already stated, they love the fucking speculation. They love the fucking shit out of it. 
And uh, I think we were actually on point on quite a few of those things where they're probably shitting their pants like, oh, fucking... <laughs> How the hell they know? You know who said something? You said something, Foxic? You know so who leaked something? You know, but uh, previously, uh, from what I remember, they stated there were going to only be eight weapons. We have confirmation that the alpha playtest was more than that. There, there were uh, more was included. Is uh, what I'm getting at here. Uh, yeah, I count eleven. Stocks here, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm counting 11 offhand of uh, what was used. Uh, Kusho and I kind of talked about it the other day. Uh, a scorpion. I don't think I'm missing anything else that's here. So we have M4A1, Glock 17, CQA1, MK18, AK74M, SKS, M870, shotgun, obviously, MP5, M700, M590 Sega and the in-game Scorpion. Uh, um, most of these you can see down here, SKS, M70, fucking MP5, Sega, yada yada. Um, what are y'all thoughts on this? Is 11 guns good enough? Well, I mean, they did say the more would be coming. Yes. Yeah, obviously. These guys, oh. these guys tested a lot of weapons. I think they have a very good idea of what they want in and what they don't want in. Yeah. And I think every gun is going to feel, besides maybe the M4 MK18 comparison, because they are very, very similar platforms. Uh, but I think that they're got ideas for the future. They just wanted to put a baseline down, and maybe we'll get like bi weekly content updates where a gun will get added, a gun will get added, a gun will get added, maybe some new armors release. That's something I'd love to see because I love live service games like that, where stuff gets constantly updated and it's not we have to wait six months every single wipe. There's a new massive amount of content, which yeah. is cool to see. But I want to see passive progression. Maybe there's in-game stuff that we can't quite unlock yet, and it's not even a game. But by the time they're expecting players to get there, that in-game stuff is going to start added to the shops. It's kind of a secret. We don't even know it's there. Yeah, definitely. And 11 would definitely be more than enough for early game, but I feel like it all depends on their um, release uh, schedule, their yeah. uh, their roadmap. Because if we have 11 guns for a year, there's only so many variations we can make, how much fun we can have with... Uh, like we can only do so many Glock 17 runs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, probably... At least, at least add in a revolver, you know? I'll probably be running the MK18 and a Glock non-stop literally just that I'm not too sure a yet disappointed but... by the lack of an ar-10 platform <laughs> dmr but i know it's coming it, it'll happen oh dude it's it's, it's, it's gonna G28, be 28 sr25 is something <laughs> it's so be uh you're listening please fun fact for you <laughs> the uh so if you actually look at the very bottom the third one from the left the vz61 uh the, so the uh the scorpion is oh. actually it's uh, originally made in czechoslovakia um, it's the, it's the SAVZ-61 Scorpion. Huh. Okay. Okay, gun nerd. <laughs> yeah, really? Nerd. I <laughs> don't know that much, but I know a lot about guns. Not that much. I actually Googled that one. Hmm. That so one thing I'm, one thing I would also like to note, right? So, I feel like there is plenty room for expansion because i'm looking in the top right so this right here we're talking about starter stuff right yeah obviously rank one so this yeah, is he's level one this yeah. is what you're gonna see off the the rip so my speculation is hey you you do his task and whatnot and then more will be unlocked maybe he'll by you uncovering or bring him more intel he'll be able to import uh, a better selection of more modernized up to speed equipment because right now looking at it like this stuff is i guess given the timeline this is like general entry level equipment that you would see from regular armed forces well the only thing that's really like above Bulb part would be your MK18. Everything else is you'd see it. Like it, it's very. I mean, the m 4 one has been a platform since the late '80s, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, as far as modern guns, the MK18 is the only one that's been produced in the last 
decade and a half or so. I mean, yeah, it's, but, still, it's still an M4 platform, though. It is. It's literally just different gas blocks and upper receivers and stuff like that. It just makes the weapon perform better. So yeah. Right. But yeah. looking at it, right, I'm not even focusing on the inventory. I'm focusing on just based off of what we see here. This is what Gunny got to offer. And mm -hmm. it, it looks like just standard, like, thrown together M4s that pro probably were recovered from some military. Could be. But, uh, is it hey, a, now that you pull it, it up closer, look in the stash at the very bottom. You can just see, you know, in the stash. Stash. Um, yeah. The five by twenty-five. Have we seen anything at five by twenty-five in the game yet? I'm not sure. What five by twenty-five? Anyways, I'm looking at it. Well, the, the that the could be a three. That and could be I, a three too. That looks like an optic, right? No, 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 no that. No, that's, that's got to be. Five. Yeah, that's got to be that's a twenty-five. So that's also we we see the F. I'm guaranteeing that's an F14 yeah. hand grenade. But uh, uh yeah, that's an yeah, optic. So could that be PSG so that could be confirmation of another of a uh, twelfth weapon. Uh, I mean, that possibly. Haven't seen yet. I I haven't seen anything in the game so far that I know that shoots five by twenty-five. No, no, no. no, no, no I think no, that's an optic. Yeah, that's yeah, a viper. Yeah, that's yeah, a viper. It's, yeah, no. uh, okay. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a five by twenty-five PST Gen two. That's the viper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vortex Viper. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no um All right. other deal here. A five by round. Okay. It's it's a one by two slot. Kinda like the uh ACOG yep. here. But um I wanted to shift perspective up to here real quick. So you have Gunny twenty six rep. Um not sure if he did this person did a mission or anything before, but that's a lot of rep to get to that level is a two. Lot. I'm hoping it's more spend money and also do missions. Yeah, there's no um, exact on that of what you see there. And we don't know what the next rep level is going to be. But um, just from a Tarkov standpoint, this is this is a Tarkov clone, bro. This is what people's going to say, right? I mean, dude, but uh, hold on. what's up? Go go down all the way to the attachments because I just noticed something. Okay. Uh. Yeah, there's an M16A1 upper. There you go. I I knew I saw it. So okay. that this confuses me because there's all these attachments for guns that he doesn't sell. So maybe there's variations of different guns that you can build to replicate what they are, like putting a longer barrel and different handguard and a different upper on that CQ, and now you've made an M16A1. Because the CQ is probably just a salvage version of the M16. But if you wanted no, to spend the money. Uh, is CQ, okay, it's a Chinese. Why would they sell an M16A1 upper if there's no M16A1? That just throws me off. I don't know, maybe if that's a labeling mishap that happened during the, the well, playtest. It, it could just be you aren't at a high enough level where you can buy the M16. Or because he's not selling an M700, is he? If you scroll up. No. Yeah. No, no, yeah, he's got him. He's uh, himself, not so. in here. Not in here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's he's only selling parts for it. So I, I think um, that's just something you can buy later on, like for later on usage. Uh, the thing I was wanting to uh, point out um, was we're playing PMCs. PMCs are known to get very goofy guns. They're, they're known for... Uh, picking up what uh, militaries are no longer using anymore. So I'm hoping that we do get sort of like G3s, uh, stuff like that, you know, just out of like out of use, but still in circulation weapons that they'd be able to pick up off of a government fairly easily. Yeah. You mean like an old school foul? Oh, yeah. 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 Basically anything. Um... Anything that's no longer in use uh, by standard militaries are pretty pretty open for usage obviously also this would be where you get your tasks yeah right here um one thing i wanted to touch on is so you have handshake gunny lab rat that are active and you have three locked now this could be just they're unfinished coming soon or mission 
mission quests. Uh, I'd actually like them to be locked behind missions, honestly. You know, they spout the whole you can play as you wish, play how you want type game. But uh, if you want to progress, you're going to be forced to play the missions. That's how every game should be, not just play and your everything's unlocked. You know, you don't have to do a mission. You know, I, I, I don't like that type of um, standpoint. So there's Artisan, Banshee, and Turncoat. Um, just by the names, what do you think we could possibly see from these people? Right off the bat, uh, Turncoat kind of makes me think apparel, you know? That's what I was going to say, high tier apparel. Banshee, oh, I would think uh, armor, and Artisan, I have no idea. High tier attachments? Artisan, so artisan Art yeah. The gear, like, the idea of making a gun. And maybe. VGs, yeah. maybe Ooh. That, sort of that. <laughs> now you're... You're speaking my gear, baby. <laughs> Wait. I thought, I thought turncoat would be like a black market. The turncoat is, uh -oh. sounds kind of shady. Turncoat yeah. Sounds like something. Yeah. That's a good idea. Because yeah, if, if you think about it, the turncoat is a trader. And traders is like shady stuff right there. Usually. Yeah. Factionless. That's also another option. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 they had turncoat before they, uh, before they even thought of the, um, uh, the rogues. Factionless trader, bro. And then Banshee, when I'm thinking of Banshee right here, I'm thinking about, like, instead of armor, per se, what about ghillies? Because we haven't really touched on clothing yet. And I know that's for later on, but I feel like Banshee, it's more or less like you're outdoorsy, maybe... Like if you were going to be out there for X amount of times, say you were a rogue, hey, Banshee would probably be the guy I would talk to. Yeah, 100%. Anything uh, anyone else wants to add? Gamma, would you like to add yeah. anything? Anyone else? So you think we talk about what we thought Artisan would sell? Uh, a little bit, yeah. NVGs, yeah, sorry, stuff like that. You I think they'll have... Um... Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I was more thinking perhaps more higher-end parts. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. High-tier attachments yeah. and things like that. Different yeah. uppers and anything else. Or perhaps limited supply weapons. Like, say, the Arctic Warfare... Something that that you would see uh, through PMCs, but they would be, you know, you, you would see them in the pictures of, say, like um, Blackwater. You'd see them really carrying a one of one hundred gun on one of their dudes. Yeah. Maybe he's the that kind of guy. What um? I just noticed something. What's up? Right off of. Um, so obviously we got the faction logos. You know how we got the two stars for um, security system. I'm looking at yeah. Gunny's uh, patch right there. He, he got a oh, okay. he got a star right there. It, we we don't know what that. So who's to say that? I don't know. Maybe some of these uh, traders were each aligned to the faction of faction. sorts. Yeah. But everybody obviously has access to them because they're impartial. And yeah. And Gunny is a military name, and we know how Mithras loves their former military guys. Yep. Mm-hmm. Could be, could be. That's a pretty, pretty damn good fucking find right there. You think they'll have um, in raid traders? Uh, that would be an interesting idea. Kind of yeah. like what Tarkov has on Lighthouse. I mean, we know that they want to put that center portion at the middle of the map. I believe middle of the map anyways. Uh, not sure how they're going to do that. Uh, the Buddhist temple or whatever they had talked about, uh, where you could do the trading with other players and stuff, and it's like a safe zone. Uh, perhaps there's... That's where these high tier uh, traders are, something like that. Maybe you can't get them at your base. Not sure. Maybe that's also why why they're locked. Um, unsure on that portion. 
but who knows. Uh, I guess I'll move on here unless somebody wants to add anything else. All right. So the next trader, Handshake. Uh, that looks like a Florida Lee patch. That 1% is. I was going to say, yeah, that, that looks Florida more Lee. like... Are you sure, you sure it's not Canada? Yeah, that... No, it looks like a Florida <laughs> Lee to me. doesn't look like a Maple Leaf. Yeah, I just... I, I thought about zooming in on the first thing that caught eye since uh, he pointed out the star. I was like, is that a fucking star to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, looks like a fucking something, you know? A Leaf or a Florida Lee, whatever. Basically the same thing. Um, So, obviously, he's kind of like a armor slash bags and shit i mean you don't really see any armor but yeah um there's like nothing that. different here you know this, this is all going to be the same um anyone wants to add anything here uh for this trader i mean obviously we know what he's carrying <laughs> you think we'll start off with uh um pretty much like a fast lightweight scout in the beginning of the game since he doesn't have any armor and it's ah. rank one I'd say, yeah, I'd 100% say so. We're basically that's why we have that whole first starter level uh, area. Uh, I'm not sure the play testers if they had any armor on, but you, you've seen them getting one tap. Um, so I <clears throat> tactically, you know what I'm getting at, and uh, the, a lot of you in this Discord know what I'm getting at. Um, I don't think they allowed them to see armor on this guy for various reasons they don't want to showcase to the community yet. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. That would also make sense, I guess, why there's nothing really in his yeah, inventory here unless he scrolls never down. Seen, we've never seen the armor in the game other than them opening their inventory. That's that's it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. We knew, we knew that they had helmets because someone got head tapped in one of the gameplay uh, footages. Now, hear me out, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, this guy's our um, our gear guy, so I wonder if his his tasks are going to be more or less um, associated with some of the loose loot that's out there, because I know like during some of like the showcase and you might catch it some of them in some of the different play tests videos and whatnot there were things like hats and just like gear that looked very much equipable that yeah. you could turn in and maybe maybe who's to say there's like a, a material that he needs in order to get or have that gear made that way you'll be able to purchase it later on down the line. But who's to say? Yeah. No, I totally understand that. Uh, I mean, it's possible. Who knows? Uh, we've seen bags um, that were loose that you, it's obvious you could pick up. You know, one looked like a school backpack. Um... Not sure though exactly. I think they're gonna be just regular. You know, I don't think they're gonna yep. be too specific or whatnot. Uh, Tarkov pretty much does the same thing. Uh, besides the whole like killing PMCs things and like the gun missions where you could build guns. Perhaps they might be something in here. Somebody wants a gun, needs a gun built by Gunny. Who knows? The one thing I don't want to see is I and I'm just I hate to compare this to Tarkov. But I mean, we're already on that page, but uh, if I see a task to bring them an item and it has to be found in raid, even though we don't have a found in raid system in this game. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> yeah. I could bring, see me, the... bring me a snack bar that you found five minutes right. ago. Okay, I went and bought it from... So uh, you could trade... Uh, Lab rat. Yeah, yeah, I bought it from Lab Rat. No, I can't take it from Lab Rat. You have to find it. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. And sanalyzers. That's that's their whole negation to deal with cheaters or whatever the fuck, which doesn't make any sense because the cheaters just go didn't. in raid and grab everything anyways. Yeah, make people play anything. the game. Yeah. yeah so all it, all it did was make the game harder for everyone else who played it. And 
did nothing to the people who retreated. Moving on to no, the next one. What's up? Um, just something I noticed on for a handshake. Obviously, okay. he was wearing all black, so he, he, based off of what we know about factions, once again, he looks like that type of dude who he doesn't seem like the the military. He doesn't seem like the, that military guy. He seems like the guy who just volunteered to go over and, and do this. I mean, so it could be. I could say, see that. I wonder if his task could also be more aligned with either Crimson Shield or oh, uh, what's it called? Um, one of the other Lamag Relief. Lamag Relief, right? Because he, he right? We we got what looks like the the Florida Leaf. And then he, he's wearing like a, a generic flag that anybody could honestly get their hands on if they have the right around money. But nothing on him screams, oh, hey, I I served in the military. Like, you don't get that vibe from him. Just, I do, but I don't want to pick fun at you real quick. Did you say Florida Leaf? <laughs> it's Florida Leaf. Florida, Florida, no, Florida, <laughs> Florida yeah, Leaf. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of the Florida, Florida. Leaf, um, Again, royal symbolism. Yeah. Ooh. I go back to Crimson. He's got a point. Yeah. Zoom in on his just, pistol. Stick, and also, the Fleur On his pistol? Uh, okay. It has that... been, uh, like, associated with um, heraldry, which I was also picking up that fast from uh, the Crimson Shield. No one Is that a... shields. Is that that's a, a pistol? pistol? Yeah, that's a pistol, because if you. If, cause, okay, so that right there is a pistol? Because if you go a little bit more towards the left, just move the cursor a little bit, no, like that's the cursor. A yeah. That's no, right. that's a mag. That, yeah, that's, that's a mag. A that's, a mag. Yeah. Yeah. that's not a G17, though. Guys, it's a yeah. clip. <laughs> it's it's so oh my God. God. I just caught a clip. One Triggered more everybody to watch that's this video. That's a clip I'll have you know. It's a clip -azine. Um, Good point out there on the Florida Lee. Florida Leaf. Uh, Lord Lee. Lord Lee. <laughs> uh, one thing, since yeah. since you were bringing up tasks, and it, it kind of made me think a little bit more, why are we getting tasks from traders and not a mission board when it's a very specific thing we're here to do? Yeah. Don't that make sense? Maybe. Okay. Maybe these are secondary tasks. Like we got our yeah. mission, and then yeah, it, it's sort of like, oh, I'm going to the since trader you're... real quick, and he goes, hey, you're going out. Oh, can you grab me this? Yeah. Or, now, where's the mission board? There okay, could be so handlers. I wasn't one to talk in about tasks too much because of the video I'm fixing to upload. Yeah. Well, something I will brush up on because I don't plan on talking about this at all. Um, so, there was a talk going around about the ability for factions to be able to more or less upgrade their base systems or uh, the, 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 the your overall faction upgrade ability and i wonder if that's going to be through a, a, a mission board specifically for factions you know i heard conversations about that back when the game was like the first when i started following the game around six or seven months ago they was talking about how the bases were going to be able to upgrade and your faction was going to be able to get stronger whenever you allied yeah i think it's all a rumor but i don't it, that's that's a touchy subject because i it it, i don't know anything about it i've only talked about it it just hearing it from others i don't see how that would be possible for them to do that with a 16 v 16 v 16 unless it's like internal to your like group that you partner with if that makes any sense so say like basically like dmz you go in as a three man four man whatever the fuck i can't remember what it is but in the field you can team up with people and then you can't shoot your friends, which I mean, obviously you should be able to shoot your friends here, but just like a, a system kind of like that, like you meet up with somebody, hey, look, you want to team up? You'd have your secondary party type thing, right? So you create a lobby, uh, a gaming lobby portion before joining the server. That's what we know so far. You can't just join a friend. You know, they, that friend would interns, in, in terms have to leave and then you create the lobby with him which kind of sucks, honestly. You know, if you really think about the whole scheme of things, but is what it is for now. Um, then you get in. So you would meet up with uh, an opposing faction, right? 
and then you can team up with them. But then that plays into why not just team up with your faction, you know? Because you're technically teamed up already. Like, how would that? It it's kind of a uh, there's a clash right there. You know what I mean? Just a little bit of clash. Kind of odd. Not sure how they would pull that off. Is better than 15. Yeah, but uh, you get what I'm saying. At like uh, your whole faction would have to agree, you know. And it's a server that's not constant, so there's constant people, constantly people joining. Uh, is what I'm trying to get at here. The, the, the server is not constantly the same, is what I mean. It's a server that's constant because it's persistent, obviously. But, um, I would the people's it up not like the same. Cross server, uh, cross server, um, uh, the thought just went out of my head as soon as I was saying that. Something, something um, like Helldivers, you mean? Uh, kinda. Uh, even though I've never played the game and don't know a whole lot about it, but I've heard enough. Uh, so it's, uh, cross server objectives. That's what I was getting at. Um, so like it would I, I don't know what you would upgrade in the base as far as uh or what you would get for doing faction specific missions that would give you an edge or something that you would want as far as a faction there's a lot to throw at that uh but it's something i could definitely see me in a possibility um also they did say you'd have your own hooch which is uh from what i understand is basically like a tent but um these upgrades may just be specific towards that as in upgrading your base it's your base but you have a hooch there uh yeah like a two-man tent or something similar yeah like may ooh, maybe their wording's just not very specific maybe it's not the full upgrade to the base not sure exactly but um i could see something go uh at them going um uh, in depth as to the fact that like um how hell divers is it's basically you have everybody that plays hell divers and you're fighting against ai and it's a server-wide type thing fighting on different planets and sectors and whatnot and you might get on two days later and that sector is already taken and you got rewards because you played like a mission you know but a percentage of that um you get the cut out of uh i guess that's what i'm trying to say so maybe they might do it in that type of way for a faction base upgrade you know but it's you're going opposing factions wise with two other factions this could be very very how i say overpowered if there's too many people on one side pushing for missions and these very specific missions to upgrade the base. That's what. So, that's what I was kind of scared of with the, it because I was thinking of how divers do comparison. The the. Is, oh, sorry. Go on. Go on. Yeah, because you can already see from what's in the community that the uh, uh, what is it the LRI, whatever that or whatever the faction is is already like as far as Discord goes like the least amount of people that seem to be active in chats are interested in that. May, mainly seems to be MSS and CSI so far is something I'm a little worried about if it ends up going that way because you're going to have one faction that like people are just not going to like and that faction is going to struggle for new players who maybe don't follow the story or the lore because another thing I wanted to mention with the landing zone I'm scared of high level players swarming those beginning areas on those weaker factions and just ruining player, players days just yeah. sitting there waiting to come in on their little birds sitting in the distance because they already have that landing mark playing area marked on their map because as far as i know you should be able to mark everybody's landing zones not just action specific because the landing zone is a landing zone and just sitting there with a sniper or a decent ar with a nice scope on it and just waiting and okay i hear a helicopter i'm gonna pay attention to there now and now they're just going to wipe out a whole squad by themselves that that terrifies me in a little bit i'm not gonna lie I, I just wanted to touch one more thing real quick. Um, so these base upgrades could be something very simple like your stash, okay? It, it could be very simple. Something that's not going to overtake other factions and be OP in a sense. You know what I mean? It could be something very simple and it could be multiple simple different things like... Um, thermals in your base every 24 hours you know uh, for free no 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 don't don't that'd don't do that uh, <laughs> that'd <no>. be busted <laughs> all right so uh, I would, 
Go on. Sorry. Yeah, so one thing I would like to see, if there were to be anything faction-specific, maybe it would be intel-based. Maybe there's more information, maybe maybe something for communications. Because right now, we don't really necessarily have a means for communicating with each other outside of the the faction camp or whatever yeah because it's like once you're in the field you're just you're sort of out there with your specific team but maybe hey if you do xyz then maybe you'll have access to maybe better communications with some of your potential allies or neutral party however you may see fit yeah no uh Tactical, I sent you an image of uh, something I believe uh, you were just talking about the uh, your own little area within the base camp. I believe we've already seen a picture of that. Okay. Yeah, I got it pulled notice, up. Yeah, behind the guy to the back right, you also see the helo. To the back right, you see the helo uh, helicopter. Yeah, and then this is their hooch, supposedly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, we're pretty much done with the whole um, going over the weapons and whatnot. The last thing uh, and final thing that I would like to touch on is what do you want and don't want to see? Starting with want first, but if you could give like a percentage of want. I'll go ahead and go first and just touch on... Um, my main three and then let leave my last one for last because it's it's the banger nobody's talking about and i think it's game changing if we don't have it but regular playthroughs if we do have it um uh, i'll just get into it so in-depth custer uh i'm messing up that word again uh character customization so obviously, before you get in, you're going to have your character customization menu. Uh, still not sure if you could create more than one character. It'd be nice if you can, but I'm just, I understand why they wouldn't want you to. Uh, basically, to stick to one faction. Um, I think this is about a 6 for me. A 6% want. Uh, not needed early, obviously. You know, y'all, Rick, everybody, make sure... Uh, the developers get their stuff together and give us a banger don't worry about the character customizations by no means this could come much later um so ghillie suits that's a very touchy subject for people um obviously it's gonna be realistic um you could build the ghillie suits in the field i've talked about talked about this before in my first uh inside gray zone series uh Obviously, I'm going to want it. That's an 8 for me. 8 per 8% straight up on top. Not at the beginning. Don't need it at the beginning. I'd like regular gameplay, not much apparel even. Just so you could really tell the difference between uh, enemies. Uh, I mean, opposing factions. You know, stuff like that. Um, what do y'all think about that? I think the goodie suits, um, while super interesting, and personally, I, I actually would be enthusiastic. I I, I play games like uh, they they have them. The first one that comes to mind is Arma. Yeah. And that is that can be a nightmare to be fighting against that, especially. And I and I say that from the perspective of. of I forgot who it was that was saying it earlier, but um, as someone who wants to PvP as a PMC from whatever faction, uh, if you if you start camping uh, spots that are popular and frequently traveled and the like, and you have a ghillie suit and you're suppressed, um, you you can you can make anyone's day a nightmare. Yeah, with, with, subso with subsonic ammo. 
Yeah, I, it's... I don't know. I don't know if there is still Sonic ammo in the game, but... Oh, there will be. I mean, if you're far enough away, you're in a 308, so, you know, suppressed. You, yeah. you won't really be able to tell. It, like, if I'm 600 meters away from you and in a ghillie suit, lying down in a bush, pretending to be part of the grass in front of the bush, and I shoot, shoot at you, you you're not going to know where you got, you know. You, you're not going to know. The, uh... You're not going to even hear the shot. The only it's, it's a nightmare. The only counter would be thermals, pretty much, or if you're a very good player, and you're so it, the game's realistic. Uh, I'm not sure if most people play like this, but I guess what makes me decent at Tarkov is you're constantly expecting where other players might be. Always be aware of your surroundings, and once you pop a corner, expect the player right there. Because very well, there may be a player right there. That you're anticipating, the anticipation of where somebody might be. So say, for instance, you're expecting someone up on the hill sniping, right? Because that's the best vantage point that a sniper might get you from. And then one of your buddies just gets shot dead. Don't know where it's from. You know, uh, your guesstimate will be up there. So hopefully you could pick him off before he gets the next shot on you, if you could spot him. Now, ghillie suits, yeah, you're not going to be able to spot the fucker, but thermals. I mean, it's... My only counter to thermals, and I mean, this would be really wild if they even implemented it to this level. Thermal ghillies? But, well, that exists. Yeah, To 100%. begin with, there are ghillies that are designed um, to be invisible, to a, after for for a certain length of time because I, it, as you wear a ghillie obviously it's on you and your body heat heats up the ghillie and then it gives you away on thermals but but even if you don't have a thermal resistant gi ghillie initially you, you you know if you have that like in in your bag um and you're in the shade and then you throw it on Right, it's not like a ghillie suit. It's more like a, like a ghillie blanket. Yeah. Um, uh, that you know, if it's in your bag the whole time, it's not getting it. It's not being really exposed to the heat. I mean, it'll have some heat exposure, but, uh, not to the same. You know, not to like a crazy de degree as if it was on your body when you're running through the, the open fields and stuff. Um, so that would be my only counter. Like, if if they want to do things realistic and make things interesting. If they implemented that concept with Gillies, which, again, I think it would be super cool. I don't think it's ever been done before in video games at all, in any game that I know of. Um, but uh, by the same token, I think it would be a nightmare to be fighting against something like that. Precisely why I want it. <laughs> uh, anyone yeah, want cool. to add anything else? Yeah, I got something. As far as the Gillies, right? We're... I could see it being a nightmare to fight against, right? But I'm also looking at the game's core mechanic. We don't know how fast energy and obviously fatigue and all that will play into account. Um, True. And obviously if you're in a ghillie, you're, you're not gonna, you normally wouldn't be running, carrying or carrying a lot on your persons. And I didn't really see a system for like slowing down your energy and just general fatigue. So I feel like the best counter for that would honestly just be time because they can only stay there for so long before they need to pack up and go back to wherever they came from. There. And then I'm also thinking, right, for a map that size, they're, they're talking about a thousand plus AI. Yeah. So I really don't see. So while a ghillie might give them an advantage, even if they took a shot from a distance, I'm sure there will be some group, whether it be dynamic AI or not, on a patrol. Maybe they're close. Because even if you have subsonic ammo and is far out from a player if a guy's within a couple hundred meters you can still hear a suppressed shot
Yeah. I understand exactly what you mean. Um, I forgot where I was going with it. Um, so I give it a percent one. Yeah. So you had said there's no energy, like the energy drains the same if you're like running or not moving. It's uh, actually different from what I recall. I think I remember, uh, yeah, it was Redbeard, the video that I had just recently released with Redbeard. He had spoke about it in there about someone, uh, actually, no, it was a pre, oh. the pre warm up before getting into the video. So it's not going to be in that video. Sorry. Uh, basically, there were people almost dropping dead in the playtest because their energy drain factors were a little wonky and they had to fix some things. So there are energy drain factors due to weight, I believe. And obviously, if you're just nonstop sprinting, your energy is going to drain more, which is pretty awesome to have. Tarkov does not have this and it's like uh okay so you get into tarkov and it's a skill-based system where the more you eat and drink the less you have to over the long course of like freaking forever that you play so there are some players that get in there they don't have to eat or drink period what fun is that where why is that system like that that's just that portion of the system is totally asinine Grey Zone Warfare, on the other hand, is taking it a different route where it's realistic, you know, pun intended, really realistic. But uh, their factors just need to be correct for me to really enjoy playing. Because uh, I remember a little game called Ark Survival Evolved, and that was just a nightmare. Chomping at bit in that game, you know, nonstop having to eat. I hate games like that. Uh, anyone else want to add anything to this? before anyone else gives their insight and what they want. That's clearly Wolverine. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I will never unsee that now, thank you. I, I didn't notice until now either, but yeah, that's... Handshake. Logan, Old man Logan. <laughs> Handshake is a uh, Wolverine. <laughs> uh, anyone... Uh... X-Men reference. Oh, God. Anyone wants to add anything else? Anyone wants to go ahead and push forward with what they want to see for the game and give a rate scale? Uh, one thing I would like to see is, uh, and it's, uh, I know this is going to come later down the road, they're already looking at the idea, is uh, the possibility with having um, dedicated servers or private servers. Yeah. And... I mean, it's on Unreal, so the modding potentials for this game could be wild. We already know people like Muna is going to mod it or try attempt to do uh, client-side mods for uh, camos and stuff the day he gets the game. I mean, if they decide to go through with uh, private servers or allow us to have dedicated servers for the game, it's... Uh, I mean, look at Arma. I, I'm not saying this is going to be anything like Arma. I... I don't know what to compare it to. I don't want to compare it to Tarkov. <laughs> I really don't. It's really its own thing at the end of yeah, the day. Yeah, it's its own it. thing. But, I mean, it, I mean, heck, if, uh, if that's the way we're looking at it, if Arma didn't have modded servers, it wouldn't be as big as, big as it is today. Uh, I don't think it, it would have any players left at this point. It would have died a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I know this game is going to have a lot better core gameplay than Arma does by a lot, but the potential for this game, if they open that up, is just going to be wild, and I would love to see it. Uh, it's it, it may not be anything that's needed for the design of this game, because we, I mean, truly none of us know what the core core game gameplay is going to be, uh, be like truly, especially whenever it's released. Um... But I'm just brainstorming on the idea. It's it's something I would love to see. Uh, granted, I would love to play the game and see what the core gameplay is going to be like. It may not be needed, but even if it's not needed, it would be something interesting to have later down the road after, I don't know, all of us have done everything a handful of times. You know what comes into mind when I'm thinking of it at the end of the day? As far as GZW goes, I 
there was a um, I'm trying to think of that one game I played it where you start off on a plane that crash landed onto the island you compare forest, with forest, uh, the forest right yeah so spoiler alert to those who haven't played it but uh well well it's an old game so it's whatever but the forest you have the option to play it as is where you could just survive or you could do the story but even after you finish the story you have the option to keep on continuing on if you really enjoyed the survival aspect of the game and i wonder if gzw will take a similar approach where say you do uncover what went wrong but obviously there are still things that you notice maybe when you were playing down the line there are things that you notice that are unfinished like hey there's still gonna be bandits running around like obviously pmc they their their goal is pretty clear set but who's to say that even after they uncover things that they just up and leave right away there's always something that's going to be unfinished so i feel like it could i could see a potential continuation even after everything's said and done so daily missions got it <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so what I would want to be added to the game is I, I'd really want it to you have to eat every five minutes or else you die. Oh god. <laughs> uh you have to drink water or else you, you, you get dehydrated and you get sunstroke. I and mean, um, I think that's kinda how that works. And I, I hope that uh <laughs> And die. Hope, actually you know you know what? I hope it doesn't affect anyone else's character but tacticals. Oh my god. Yikes. <laughs> It's like, oh, sorry, guys, I gotta eat real quick. Dude, you just ate a minute ago. I need more food. I'll never be able to snipe in this ghillie suit. <laughs> I'd be interested in, like, uh... Depending on how the map is, in terms of, uh... The roads and stuff being, uh... Viable. I'd be interested in, like, uh... Old pickup trucks being usable for transportation you gotta like find them and fix them fix them up but uh the because that oh sorry go on i just don't want a walking simulator like arma is a fun game but when you when you gotta walk for 10 minutes in real life just to get to where you want to get to and then you get killed instantly and you gotta walk 10 minutes again uh, that that gets old pretty quick I mean, it's already confirmed that we're getting more than the more LZs than we've already seen, though. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, that's a quick route, man. What if I want to take the scenic route on the road? Walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah, like I, <laughs> I, I, I will take vehicles as long as they implement uh, landmines. A means of destruction. Well, that's why that vehicles. Yep. Th that's why I said like old school pickup trucks, because like you you look at it, like a. Uh, you remember um. I forgot what it was. Some special forces on the news uh, a while ago that got ambushed in Africa. Um, I think it was a couple years ago, and they were they were in pickup trucks, bro. They were in pickup trucks. Like for me, it just makes sense. Like that's that's what you see also in the Middle East, like. They take yeah. a pickup truck and the rocket pod from an MI8 or whatever, and they use it as a tank. It's, it's a pickup truck, bro. They're everywhere. The Toyota Hilux or whatever. My thing is, if they do implement a vehicle like that, given off of the size of said island, will it will it be too quick of uh, transportation? Because I'm thinking 42 square kilometers from from a on ground uh, standpoint. That's it's pretty uh, that's pretty vast. But even with the, a helicopter, it's it's kind of 
relatively small per se. But then oh. if you implement ground vehicles too, given the player size, uh, how would you balance that? Um, I don't know if, if you're interested in looking it up, but if you look at Arma 3, the map Tonoa, it's, I, I think it's a pretty good indicator of what it would look like um, in Grey Zone in terms of topography and, and that like. Um, the way you balance it is you can't just drive off-road wherever you want. You're not going to be able to take a car and drive it through the dense jungle in, in, um, in the game. Like it's just, there's trees everywhere, there's rocks, there's roots, it's uneven ground. Um, and then again, like, that's why I said, given how the roads are, um, are they being maintained and stuff like that? Um, because of the event and then the roads aren't being maintained. That's why I even, that's why, that's why I, even, I preface it with like, depending on how the infrastructure is being made, quote unquote, maintained, um, whether it's even viable. But I think if you if you look at the map Tonoa, um, and you just look at the big island, uh, the 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 map is a hundred square kilometers, I think. But I think the the islands themselves are isolated by themselves, are a good indicator of how you can traverse them. See you know, the issue with that though is you got to realize it, the, so the maps they're planning on having a, I believe they said a thousand. AI on the yeah, map. thousand plus, yep. You're not going to be wanted to be driving only on the main roads. Compact in a non-armored vehicle. You're a sitting duck at that point. And then oh, when you make it back, pretty much. where are you going to put your vehicle? And how are, is that vehicle going to be specific to you? What about the other 12 individuals? Assuming that you're in a team... Or if you're solo, if you're running solo, what about oh, no, the other it's, fifteen players that are? It's 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 a find like you you find, like I'm not saying that if you find that at base and like that you go out in the field and you find a working vehicle and take it back and then you know however long it lasts and then as far you know as far as like while you're driving in a civilian car and that can like easily be shot through my counter that is. Um, and you see it in some of the videos of the people um, that, that played the alpha. A little bird is literally, it, you're completely un uh, unprotected. You're completely exposed when you're flying on a little bird. You're flying on a bench outside. So you could totally get clapped in the face by an AK, M4 platform, M700, you know. RPG. Hey. It's, it's it's not that armored. It's not, and I'm talking about like now, like like the the pilot stuff. It's it's. Yeah, but then you would have to add in a whole other bar ballpark. If we're going to talk about the add them adding vehicles to the game, especially unarmored vehicles. Now you need to look at vehicle uh, uh, disabling, it, and what that would entail. Because if you can't disable the vehicle. Uh, dude, if I get run over by a truck, I'm I'm gonna be livid. But who's to say that they're not already doing that with the little birds? It might not be something that they plan for the initial release, but that could be something that they're looking out for. That you can you can disable them, you know, through various means. I'm, yeah, I'm that, pretty I mean, sure I you can. So I mean, who's to say you can't do that with a ground vehicle? Yeah. yeah. Uh. I don't know, they'll, they'll, that's just my thought, you know, and something that I like to see. And like, I, I would just keep it to civilian vehicles and not tied to the faction, your tanks. faction base, but just like something you tanks. find in. But, dude, if they, if they did tanks or anything like that, it would have to be Soviet, Soviet uh, era. How else are you going to take down the dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> see, I already know we're going to see Tactical riding up on his bike. He's just going to be driving by us. Going ching ching, they see me rolling <laughs> <laughs> with a little dinosaur keychain. Um, oh my goodness. 
I think that's gonna be like mainly a mod thing for uh, smaller servers or something because that's unless they do mods and make bigger maps or something. Not to say that this map's small by any means, but it's just it's very hilly and just like the whole thousand AI thing. That's yikes. I don't know. And I, I honestly don't know how I feel about having vehicles, period. Honestly. Uh, it's more of a run and gun type of game for me, tactically. Um, Did it, you just pick a plumber with your own name again? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else wants to add anything? No? Uh, what about uh, what you don't want to see? So... My big don't want to see is this game turning into anything like Nikita, basically. Not listening to the community and listening to streamers instead. And I'm a squad. Yeah, squad. That's literally another one that was up is squad. So I don't know how y'all if y'all ever played squad in the beginning, but squad was fucking wonderful in the beginning before they fucked around with the sights and made everything all weird with the magnifications and I started to listen to youtubers who uh, didn't really know what they were talking about yeah basically just to keep them around so they could stream the game and basically anyone big like that that's streaming the game it's gonna bring in more people but um uh, Anyways, the whole squad thing, they... It was good before they added the stamina mechanic. The stamina mechanic, whenever I recently just played about two months ago, it was... Oh my god. I didn't want to play. And that was their gist of making people use vehicles more. Well, guess what? What happened to the player blade? Uh, player base not just because of that a lot of people still kept playing but it's slowly dying off and i know squad's an old game but they just released so i think they've just released like three years ago did that that could be gzw very well so it stays in beta releases and then three years later it's dead if they don't keep listening to the community and i think squad has some um external factors i think they were bought out by another company maybe or maybe i'm getting two different games messed up I'm not sure exactly but all i know is if you don't listen to the community you ain't gonna have one period that's my big main one and that is a 10 need to get that one right 100 percent um and the yeah, other we've seen too many games the other main one is don't spoil the event before the game's out please the, you need to keep the event hidden. List some things maybe around it. Give some more lore for us. But don't list what the event is blatantly. I want to know that. But don't want to all at the same time. Because it would ruin me. <laughs> I'd be making videos non-stop. Podcasts. All this shit. But uh, yeah. It, give people the experience of playing through the game to find out what the, what it is who knows it might take two weeks before somebody figures out what the hell the event actually is we're gonna have videos titled lore with a number who knows who knows what exactly what we're gonna have but i love games like this i really hope they do a wonderful job with the lore and i hope we have spin-offs of the lore which take you in two, maybe three, maybe four, five different directions just from the lore itself and running into to, uh, different things like notes and stuff. Uh, what's y'all take? And what do y'all want to add to what you don't want to see? Me, one thing I don't want to see, um, and the, the first distaste was more or less it was something that was mentioned in uh landmarks reaction to uh the different videos on gzw and he he met he mentioned something about the quest being streamlined 
and because he was like, oh, everybody's just going to upload XYZ to a wiki. I, even though it more than likely will happen, I do not. I, I really wouldn't want to see it. I wouldn't want a wiki saying, hey, everybody, this is where this is. It, it goes online with, hey, let the player experience what the game is because if if somebody if they just came out right and told us what the core mechanic of the game is from from the jump we wouldn't really have as much heightened interest like the thing that really drew me in the gzw is okay now now i i have i have a, a goal in mind for what i want to do and i want to uncover what is going on here but it, it could very much not be the core of the game, but I, I want to figure out from my own experience what the core mechanic of the game is. I wouldn't want everything getting, you know, leaked. And then next thing you know, I'm in the middle of a playthrough and a buddy's like, oh yeah, here, this wiki says we, we got to go here specifically so we can get done with this. Like, that's Wouldn't want to see any of that. That's 100% a very good point that you just made. I don't know how I didn't even think about it, but... um. I'm non-stop. Uh, I mainly look at YouTube videos, period, uh, for Tarkov, but the wiki exists and there's tons of people that just look at the wiki. And that thing is constantly updated. So hopefully there's not going to be something like that, but 9 out of 10, there will. Sadly, because it's free source of information, you know, whenever you purchase the game, whatever, and they can... Anyone could easily go make a website just for this game, especially if it's a seven year outlook. And who knows, they might even make an app on the phone and charge a little bit of money for it. It's who knows, you know, but um, yep. I, I, I'm on I'm on there with you on that one. I, I don't want to see any wiki whatsoever. I do want some apps, some mobile apps, but um, mainly for other things that I want. I don't want to get into right now. Uh, anyone else wants to add anything or make a comment for um, what he just said? No, I think that was pretty apt. Okay. Anyone uh, wants to add anything else? No, I'm pretty good. I will say one thing I don't oh. want to see in the game, or, one, or like I, we have talked, and we already know that there's going to be PvP and PvE servers. I Ooh. don't want to see PvP PvE crossover with yeah. the same character. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I'm and I hate it because I know I'm gonna play this game with people who will uh only come over here and only play PvE and I will join them. But I am fine with making a second character that is PvE only. Like that is completely fine. But I don't nobody can tell me that people who want to pvp aren't going to go play pve and have a easier time because i mean they will the you the chances of you running into pvp in the pvp servers are lower than most of the games we can compare this to i, I will agree with that but you're still going to run into it in pve that's not there at all so that it gives an unfair advantage, in my opinion, yeah. to the people who are PvP only and will not go play the PvE servers. And something was stated about PvE versus PvP where your loot tier would be reduced and amount would be reduced in PvE. Uh, I kind of disagree, disagree with that also. Um, if they want to cross over... For the sole fact that, which this is what I'm speculating, and I fear this is the truth of the fact of the matter, you'll only have one character. That's why the crossover is, it, it has the ability. Uh, have a, uh, how you would say it, a disclosure. If you go into PvP, you cannot go back to PvE, period. That would be the disclosure. Uh, I don't like the joining factor and switching and swapping between the two whenever you want on the fly. 
it's like you said it's gonna make it weird um and i know they're not aiming for pvp but who goes to pvp why or pvp i if i wanted to fucking fight ai the whole time i would just go fucking pve period no i'm going to pvp to fight through the ai for players period even if it's my own faction if i don't get my chance with other opposing factions i don't care i want pvp um that's why i talked about on the other podcast or whatever uh an, an arena mode type like thing like what fucking tarkov did that would be amazing once they get their eggs in a basket you know and get everything figured out and how they could do this and i always allude to a pvp island of some sort since we're we're on an island itself you know just fly the little bird over to another in quotation server island where it's pvp be pretty cool in my opinion you know i don't know take a boat from tiger bay yeah what, what the hell do i know uh, or go underground, very deep underground to the core of the center of the earth and fight whatever you want down there. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, if they keep the PvE swapping back and forth to PvP, PvE, we, and I think I could speak as a whole, do not want to see somebody better come to PvP and then swap straight back over to PvE. And then straight back over to PvP. There needs to be a cooldown timer of like two days in between or something. It, it would take some balancing for this, but I mean, it, See, I feel it's got to be done. I say they need to separate it all together because then you don't have to worry about people who are complaining that it was well, the same tier loot. They don't have to worry about uh, worry about um, the looting system between PVE not being good as PVP for that variation. They don't have to worry about a cooldown system. There, there's a lot of variables they wouldn't have to worry about if they just separated the two where if you and i'm fine with the same character but the second you hop on let's say say i play pve only. different progression sets yeah, i, I know where you're going that, that's exactly yeah it, different progression sets it would yeah. so if i'm on pve and my character i do every mission in the game i am maxed stash is full as soon as i go over to pvp i'm starting from square one yeah and i i i, I would be fine with that but i i just there's too many variables if they don't do it, and there's too much work that they probably don't need to work on and, that they're causing themselves. And I, I think we speak for, like, the mass majority of the whole um, amount of community here. Um, I feel we feel the same way. And we just don't know what they have in plan. Because they're, they're just going forward with it from what we know. Maybe they had feedback from the alpha tests. I, or maybe the beta test is going on right now. Who knows? We don't know. I doubt they're going to be testing PvE versus PvP. Um, in the sense of server swapping. You know, I, I, I doubt that. But this is I mean, one of those for early access to. not having it, I could understand. Yeah. We just... We have to see. I, I'd like the progression sets portion. It's not going to make me not play the game. Uh, because for the fact of the matter, as long as they handle hackers, everybody's going to fucking love this game. 100%. It's enough said. That's all. Um, what were oh, you yeah, saying, no, Court? If it's, if it's... Sorry. No, I'll go ahead. Court had something. No, I was saying, um, I was agreeing that... Um... It's it's early access, so yeah, we could see anything at the end of the day. Like, but I feel like the early access that's going to be the main testing phase. That's when they'll once we as the players get to interact with what they give us right then and there. That then they'll be able to be like, okay, maybe this doesn't work so well. Let's do let's change course and, and see. That's what people forget. Even I forget from time to time. For Tarkov, I'm not playing a game. I'm playing a... I'm, I'm a tester. We're all testers in that environment. Because the game's not out yet. It's fucking beta. This is... Probably way more polished than Tarkov is now, even. Uh, after a decade, almost, being released. 
but uh, in beta phase, uh, we're all just testers here for Grey Zone Warfare, period. We are probably the most, perhaps, hyped testers that are waiting patiently for it, you know, because we are here every breath, pretty much. I see, I see y'all here every day. I can't make it every day, but a lot of y'all are here every single day. We are GZW 100%, you know? I mean, I did take the time to flesh out four different discords. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, I go, you know, uh, plug IRAM here, um, join the headquarters discord, and then choose your faction, hop in that discord, and let it rip. 18 plus only. Yep, 18 plus uh, only. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to touch back on what you just said about hackers. I... With the PvE in this game, if hackers do get over ramped and they and they got a tech tone down on it, I mean it's as simple as all of us to start swapping over to PvE for a while until it starts getting fixed. That's yeah. not that bad. Big I don't think hackers are going to be a big issue in this game. I mean, you're probably still going to see them. It's, I mean, heck, you see them in games where you don't even need hackers. Uh, <clears throat> but it, it, it's going to come on not just the developers on their action to stand against hackers but honestly as a community as a whole i so many games we keep seeing getting overrun by hackers and it's just destroying the community it's destroying the game and the community's not doing anything about it i dude as lead of iram if i hear somebody is exploiting they're gone instantly and not only are they gone they're getting reported straight to uh uh bad figure games I, I will take every standpoint I can to stop it, and I think everyone else needs to as well. Absolutely. A lot of the people, who, a lot of people who game nowadays, uh, who have never cheated. I have never used hacks in a game. I will. I'm very happy about that. I will not lie. I thought about it on Tarkov, and I had a buddy that cheated, and I just I knew it wasn't for me because all I did was take a break, then come back to Tarkov, and everything was okay. For the time being yes. at that time <laughs> see i have a buddy who uh he's in iram who did hack and tarkov and i straight up told him i'm not playing tarkov with you yeah it, it, it ruins the fun. decision yeah. ruins and the fun. like out of, out of everybody who was dogging on him about him hacking i was the only one out of that group who would not run with him but it it comes from first-hand experience too so i had multiple buddies over the course of the few years that's hacked and I wouldn't necessarily call them bad hackers. Uh, but they've nonstop told me there's shit tons of people in probably 85 to 90 percent of the game hacking. And that is just unreal. Especially when your player base is roughly I think I think at the most 16 players in a match. So think about two matches. 32 players at least one of those person those people are hacking that's like three out of a hundred could be more that's how do you freaking run a game like that especially when it's a looter shooter extraction looter shooter that you have a severe loss of stuff now gray zone warfare just to touch base on a severe loss of stuff i doubt that's going to be the feel and the case here until you get to that like severe high tiered stuff like i mean alton thermals stuff like that and even then you you could just buy more uh, i'm not sure exactly how the money system is going to work and what would you sell items for but yeah uh i think it's going to be a lot less tarkov -y in a sense to say where like you need so much money and you need to do runs just for loot if you get what i'm saying Cause it's yeah, I do. They people cringe. The uh, the guys that Mad Finger Games cringe when people say looter shooter, which yeah. at the beginning I I thought it was a looter shooter too, and I made a few videos on it. Then I began to see that's just an aspect. That's not what they're pushing for. It's Basically, like the more open world. You have realism at the top of their frontier missions lore yeah I, all I of this one is a realistic 100 realistic tactile shooter 150 fucking missions on uh fucking early access i don't even think 
Barkov has 150 missions. Not gonna lie. So, take that as y'all will. Um, if we're not gonna add anything else, I think uh, we could easily call it, guys. What do y'all think? Anything y'all wanna add? I think we... I think we yeah, I think we covered. Anything. And one thing I've really noticed that I think the community already shut down, no market system. And I think that's where a lot of cheating came into play was, oh, this item's more valuable than everything else. Yeah. True. Uh, unfortunately, to shit on your parade, uh, we are we already have confirmation on a uh, trader market system coming to the game. <laughs> no, well, no. Yeah, when I'm not when right I'm now. Market system, right? Um, I mean, like. You you seen th that? Oh, this guy got that one item that's gone for like. I hate to compare to Tarkov, but like, if key cards card, that get into yeah. fucking areas forty three million, and now you you're you're set. Yet yeah, no, we don't. Yeah. You get any of that? <laughs> I uh I honestly don't feel I want to see any keys in here. To be honest, I think every door should be unlocked. There are. Son of a bitch. You can see you have it pulled up right now. Do you see the icons of the items within the, uh, the within handshake? You see the top. You have gun icon, then you have mags, and then you have weapon modifications, helmet. Oh yeah, true, 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 true. At very bottom, you have keys, and then you have tools. I guess that it, it depends how they run it. I just I don't want the stupid Tarkov system. It's it, for the bunkers for the forbidden dinosaurs. Well, <laughs> the. The keys for Tarkov, uh, you have like the marked room key, which is like a one use and shit. We, the key is a key. If the key breaks, the key breaks. I don't feel there should be a durability on a key though. And realistically, if there's a durability on a key and you look at it and it's worn out, you could remake the fucking key. Can't you? Can't you not? So. Yeah. It it's not to make a key. I and, mean, why use a key when we have the master key? That too. Stuff like that, too. I, I, I just don't and know. for anyone who watches this video and doesn't know the reference to the master key, we're talking about a shotgun uh, that can blow off mm -hmm. door hinges. Uh, Which, it's, yeah, that's, that's master key. Should be realistic, client-based. You know, you, nobody else sees the shotgun hole but you. <laughs> no. It, I, don't, I doubt they'd add that. That's persistence. I don't know. They, uh, ma I don't know. Anything? Ma yeah. Maximum realism. I would. Uh, that that actually that is something I would like to see. It just yeah, let me let me game, shoot not? out locks and that uh, with the negative being it's allowed. Yeah. It depends like, how they do the reset on the door though, because it's a locked door. Uh, I'd estimate probably that would be along with the loot times uh, spawn timer of uh, what they gave at the moment two hours or something like that. So once that's that door is blown after two hours, it's reset once nobody's in the area. I would believe something like I that anyway. Say, I think two hours be too long, but no, I know what you mean. Yeah, just something like that. Now, Tactical, I remember earlier you said something, you said you had something game-changing that you wanted to see that you were going to wait until the end to disclose. Did you already disclose that, or...? Game-changing? Oh, I am fucking happy you brought that up. You are a fucking savior, so... Out of all the alpha footage we have seen, we have not seen... Drumroll, please! Da -da 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 jumping there is no jumping confirmed at this time unless anyone can speak otherwise and i want to know exactly how you feel about that because a it's game changing and b i'd be at a, la a loss for words if i did not have jumping in a game it's odd to me yeah no i'm i'm a big fan of just jumping places yeah. It's also another way to dodge something that everyone can do near enough. Bunny hoppers. Yep. Yep. See, I like that. No jumping, but the ability to mantle. It it really keeps you on your toes. Like, hey, I can't just like 
do some Houdini stuff to avoid <laughs> getting shot. I'm like, no. <laughs> Fucking Tarkov players. Like, like you me. get shot at, you're not just gonna <laughs> jump. No, you're you're either gonna stand there and take it or you're gonna run the cover. Yeah. There there's I mean, a honestly, give and I, take. I don't on see it. a reason to jump. I mean your kid's gonna weigh forty to eighty pounds depending on what role you're playing you're, you're jump playing as. That on. You can, but we already they already discussed people were running out of energy and close to dying within just the play test already. Yeah. Well, my main thing is, if there is something in my path that normally I should be able to jump over and I have to come to a stop and mantle it, that's... For realism, yeah. and that would Yeah, but at the same time, that'd be really unfun. And then also, would... realism, you could jump with the gear on, so yeah. it's... It's a give and take factor. I just, well, I thought it was Realistically, fun. what are you going to do? Step over the log? Step on the log and walk over? Or are yeah. you going to jump over in real life? Quite literally, the video me and Kusho seen, um, the person came up to the log and he's like, uh, I can't get around it, so let me, like, move right to left to try and get over it, and he couldn't. Which makes me feel there's no jumping. I don't know how I feel about it just yet. I'm a fan of jumping to avoid headshots, but I guess it's not real, right? I mean, think about it like this. You come to one of the many creeks and rivers. Are you just gonna flash down, get on your knees in the river whenever you could easily jump over it? I, I would jump over it, you know? So, take that as you will, I guess. Um, the guys at Madfinger Games. And jumping for tactical <laughs> and swimming yeah and, uh, and swimming <laughs> i stand on the fence of don't add it but that's me personally yeah hey give 100%. us swimming no jumping <laughs> i mean it you could also do jumping and just have severe penalties you jump once you're done with stamina pain. <laughs> yeah pain break your legs if you're, Shit. If you're heavy <laughs> You jump. The knees, they're gonna buckle. They're gonna buckle a bit. I mean, not to mention, whenever you're out of stam or out of breath, we all know exactly what that feels like. Ain't nobody aiming a gun and having good accuracy. No. Is there anything else anyone wants to add? Ah, that does it. I don't think so. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, you've seen it. You've heard it. Come back for more, like, comment, and subscribe. We are doing this weekly with multiple people. This was our longest one yet. It was very fun. Had a lot of new people here. Peace out, and Timmy, stay tactical. Uh, yeah.